In today's video, I'm going to talk about my five favorite tips or hacks that I learned from YouTube. Hey everyone, this is Lisa. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Lisa Monique Beauty, where we cover all things beauty and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. So I've been on YouTube for about three years and have been watching YouTube videos for about a year prior to that. So like many of my viewers, I usually did my makeup the same way every day using the same products until they were discontinued uh, until I still until I started watching YouTube. And then I started experimenting a little bit more, trying some new tips and techniques. And these are the five that I have found work the best for me on my day-to-day -day makeup look. The first hack is to put your concealer underneath your foundation to cover hyperpigmentation. I had never heard of that. I always put concealer over my foundation. Uh, so as I have gotten older, I found that I have more melasma, more age spots, uh, and I definitely need a little bit more coverage. The reason why putting concealer on underneath the foundation works so well is first of all, you can use a full coverage concealer uh, underneath your foundation. And even if you're using a lighter or more glowy or a different finish foundation, you're not going to ruin that finish because you're going to use a full coverage, more matte concealer underneath. So your overall complexion is still going to look really even with the same finish when the foundation is on top of it. Uh, second, or most important, is when you're putting the concealer on first, it is adhering to your skin or maybe to your skin care, but the more layers you put on of makeup, the more likely they are to um, to slip and slide and it can fade faster, it can move into fine lines and wrinkles. So by putting that concealer on first, you're more likely to have your hyperpigmentation covered all day. The second makeup hack that I learned from YouTube, it actually took me until this year to finally try it, even though I've heard about it for about a year, year and a half, and that is layering your makeup with setting spray to get it to last all day. So I don't work outside the home. And so I always said that I just need my foundation, my makeup to last for four to six hours if I'm going to lunch or running an errand or something like that. And if it fades off and it's not there by dinner time, it really didn't matter that much to me. But since I've started layering my concealer and then my foundation uh, and then spraying my overall face with setting spray, my makeup has really lasted all day. And even though I didn't necessarily need it to last until dinner time, if I did want to run out and do something at dinner time, I didn't need to touch up. So it really helps your makeup last all day when you set each layer of makeup with setting spray. So I do my concealer and then I pat on the setting spray with the sponge and then I will do my foundation and then I will do the same. And if I'm using a cream blush or something that I think might move a little bit more, again, after I apply, I will tap with setting spray. Then I will do a final setting spray spritz to get everything to last all day. Now, I don't really have a favorite setting spray. The Revlon Locket setting spray is nice. It has a little bit finer mist than a lot of my other drugstore sprays, but I will reach. I have little trial sizes of a lot of them and I will reach. I'll use the NYX. I'll use the Milani Make It Last. I'll use the e.l.f. Stay All Day. So as far as drugstore brands, I really um, just reach and grab one. Uh, for my finishing spray, like I did just use the Locket today because it is a lighter spray, but it's still a heavier mist. I usually like a super fine mist when I'm doing my top finishing layer, and I do prefer uh, some of the higher end sprays which have a nicer mist, like the Charlotte Tilbury or the Urban Decay All Nighter. The third hack that I've learned from YouTube is how to lift your eyes with eyeshadow and it is all about the placement. So when I started wearing more eyeshadow, I'm pretty much a one and done kind of gal, but when I started playing around with eyeshadow, I was blending it out, you know, using circular motions or the swish swish windshield wiper motions. And I found I was getting the eyeshadow, you know, down here, which isn't really that low. I might have wiped it up just a little bit, but bringing the eyeshadow down does weigh down your eyes, especially if you have hooded eyes, or if you're doing your eyeshadow like this, and then when your eyes rest, then this top layer, is, as we age, sometimes will drop lower, and then your eyeshadow gets lower. So the old rule of thumb was you do the edge of your nose, the back of your eyes, and then to your brows, and that's where you would put your eyeshadow. Well, I started angling it from my mouth 
to the tip of the eye, to the brow. And it really is only maybe the, the difference of the width of this brush, but instead of going from here, it took it up to here. And that, just leaving this little area right here, free of eyeshadow, just brightens the eye. And actually I'll put a little bit of concealer there. So it does give yourself an eye lift, just having that little area where we used to blend the shadow out, I'm um, having it clean and skin toned or even a little bit lighter if you use a concealer there, um, really will lift the eye. So I'm using just a one and done shadow. The key is you, you still wanna take it all the way to the corner of your lid. You don't wanna stop it on your lid, but when you're starting to move it up into the brow bone area or the transition area, that's where you want to stop it in just a little bit. So it's very subtle, but it gives that lifted illusion instead of the eye dropping down. And I'm doing it with a one and done look. I definitely do it when I'm using uh, darker shadows out in the corner of my eye. Okay, the fourth hack that I've learned from YouTube is also a placement hack, and that is for your blush and contour. So again, I used to put my contour, well, I just always heard, you know, kind of right from that center of your ear going down towards your mouth. So I would put it right here. And that was kind of the 90s way. And, and makeup is a lot of times trends, so this could change. But when I started placing it higher up on my cheekbone, it really gave me a lift. And I would watch some videos and there would be these beautiful influencers and they had these amazing cheekbones and it was very obvious where to put the blush and the contour on their higher, very defined cheekbones. But I have a rounder face so it was less noticeable on me. So what I did was, or what I do is I find my cheekbone and I'm pushing on that underside of the bone and that's where I'm putting the blush, or excuse me, that's where I'm putting my contour or my bronzer just on that underside of the bone. So I will use little tapping motions and kind of place the contour or bronzer there first, and then I start blending it out. Try, trying not to blend it down, but to blend it upwards. And then my blush, I will apply just uh, on that upper edge of the cheekbone or really just on that upper edge of my contour. Uh, so that's where I'm applying it. Of course, I still love to play, apply my blush across the tops of my cheeks. I'm um, not necessarily the apples, you know, when you smile, you know, as you age, your apples kind of drop, but I still like a little bit of blush right where your sunglasses sit, um, where the sun naturally will hit. And then also I do a little sweep on my brow bone. That's not a YouTube tip or hint. That's uh, just where I've always placed my blush all my life. Just, I've always liked it just a little bit right here and on my brow bone, uh, just to kind of pull the whole look together. I don't like it too pale right in this center area. And my fifth and final hack that I learned from YouTube, and this is the only hack that I can say, you know, definitively, this is who taught me this. That is how to lift your mouth using your lip liner. And I learned this from a video from Lisa Eldridge. She talked about turning a downturned mouth into an upturned mouth and it really works. Sometimes I will use my uh, Charlotte Tilbury lip cheat eyeliner pencil because it's in a nude color. And then I will just kind of touch up a little bit with the foundation or concealer to make sure it blends really well. But what you're going to do is you're going to soften that outer edge and then you're going to redraw your lips and you're going to make it on the edge or a little bit higher in the center and on the middle. And then as you go out towards the corner, you're gonna bring it inside that lip line and then just give it a little lift up and avoid the corners completely. You're not gonna put anything in this corner. So your lip shape is going to be a little bit shorter, which will make it a little bit wider and a little more pouty. Uh, and then if, like me, if you have those downturned corners, you're really avoiding that area, so you're not accentuating that downturned mouth. So I do this using Lisa Eldridge's lip lining pencil, uh, also because it really is the longest lasting lip pencil I have, and it lasts underneath lip gloss, which I love to wear. So I will line the lips, and then I will usually color it in with the same color because it lasts through eating and drinking, and I don't like my lipstick to wear off, and then I just have a dark lip liner 
line. So I will color in my entire lips with it. And then I will go over with a lipstick and then gloss or sometimes just gloss. So I lined using the um, Lisa Eldridge Affair, lip lining pencil on Affair. And then I use the gloss in Affair. But I, uh, the color on my lips is the her new one, Meet Me in Berlin, which is a little more brown, which I thought goes well with the colors that I'm wearing. So I hope you have enjoyed my collection of tips and tricks. Uh, I do post more on Instagram. I'm trying to post daily or almost daily. Uh, so I'll have product reviews, tips and tricks, uh, before and afters on my daily makeup looks. So if you're not following me there and you're on Instagram, you might want to check out my Instagram account, which is also Lisa Monique Beauty. As always, I sure appreciate you watching and we will see you next time.